Hello, it's Bonnie Southgate here from Pilates Therapy and the Core Inf Burn Down. Today I am going to take you through palpation of the shoulder joint. I've got Alex here and I've got my skeleton and we're just going to make our way and get familiar with uh, hands-on palpation of the shoulder. So we're going to start from the very front. So the shoulder is made up of three main bones. It is the clavicle, it is the scapula in back and the humeral head, which you can see here on the skeleton easier. So um, we've got the humeral head here, we've got the scapula and the clavicle at front. And we've got three, well, actually three main joints and one false joint. So we have got the sternoclavicular joint in the front. We come around to the end of the clavicle and we've got the acromioclavicular joint. Uh, we have then got the glenohumeral joint, and then what we have is the scapulothoracic joint, which is actually what we call a false joint because it doesn't have synovial fluid and the things that make up a true joint, but it is uh, considered a fourth joint of the shoulder girdle. So, coming back to Alex here, we can see his clavicle really easily defined. Most people you can see their clavicle. So where it comes in and meets the sternum, that is going to be his sternoclavicular joint just in there. So if we take um, his clavicle and we make all, all the way around to the outside here, then we will come to the end of the clavicle uh, and then it will be the beginning of his acromion and that will be his uh, acromioclavicular joint. When you get to the end of the clavicle and the beginning of, of the acromion, you'll feel almost a dip between the two, and that's going to be where that joint is formed. So I'm going to then follow around his acromion. So if I follow that around, and you can see on Alex a little bit, if I palpate and continue to come around with the acromion, it takes me to the spine of his scapula and all the way to the end of that. And if we look again at the skeleton, so we've just basically taken our finger around that acromion and you can see that's the spine of the scapula. And when you come to the end of that, then you're taken into the medial border of the scapula. If you look here at the uh, superior um, bit, you've got the supraspinatus fossa, which is where your supraspinatus muscle comes through. It comes out here, like we've got the tape onto the humeral head. And then there's a very large muscle, so this isn't a really good indication, which is your infraspinatus, which is gonna come all the way across onto the humeral head. You can see here as well, we've got red marks on the skeleton where we have our um, teres major and minor coming off uh, the lateral border of the scapula. So if we come back to Alex for a moment, I followed his um, acromion into the spine of the scapula coming all the way around. If you take your hand behind your back just briefly, and then his scapula is going to come out a little bit, although Alex has got a lot of muscle in his scapula, so um, it's not as easy to see. But if I'm here, I'm on the medial border of his scapula there coming around, and if I follow it down now, I can feel down here. I'm on what we call the inferior border of the scapula, which you can also see on the skeleton here. So I've just gone down the medial into the inferior, and I'm gonna follow it around to the lateral border of the scapula. So I'm gonna get Alex to lift his arm a bit. Just take it forward. So Alex didn't take it into what we call scaption. We'll talk about that in a second. So you can now see where that scapula sits and that's the lateral border of his scapula. And then if you come back to the skeleton because it's really not easy to palpate um, on someone, you follow that lateral border and then you come on to your glen, what we call the glenoid fossa, which is actually the socket for the shoulder joint, which I think is really interesting because a lot of people don't realize that the socket for their arm is actually their scapula. And that's a really important thing to know that they don't move separately. I had a client in yesterday with a bit of a shoulder issue. And um, when I said to him, you realize that you're, he, he goes to the gym a lot, that your scapula actually is the, the socket for the arm. Uh, it made him really think differently about how he'll move because if you, if this isn't moving well, then that is probably not going to sit in a good place. So the arm doesn't want to just move freely without the scapula. The, the clavicle, the scapula and the arm need to all move mechanically together well. 
So we're going to go on to the humoral, um, uh, humerus now and the head of the humerus. So that's the ball we call in the socket. If we take your arm forward a little bit here. And actually you can almost see as I do that with Alex that you get a bit of a, if I have you bend your elbow up and down, if you watch just here, you can just see that indentation. Yeah, so we have what we call the bicipital groove. Um, so he's got his deltoid over the top, but if you come up, there's a groove in which the long head of the biceps comes through. So that's the bicipital groove, and then it comes up and attaches. Um, so we can actually, if we ask him to rotate his arm in and out, there, if we're on the humeral head, so he's gonna just go that way and that way for me, Alex, there we go. So if I'm on the humeral head, then I can start to palpate and I can feel um, when that little groove goes over my fingers or through. And good, you can bring your arm down. So I can find easily when, with the rotation of the arm in or out. So I'm gonna bring you over here. Um, and if he was doing the same thing, you can see if I rotate that arm in or out, then I can palpate and I can feel that groove flicking under my finger. So then I have a good idea of where I am. Um, and then if we come around the front of the, the shoulder and he's moving in and out, that's it. If I keep coming um, around to the anterior portion of his shoulder, I'm looking for something called the coracoid process. So it will stop moving. So once I've gone from the humeral head around, I'll come on a little bony protuberance, which is actually the anterior part of your scapula called the coracoid process. It, it can be a little bit hard to distinguish from the humeral head, but now he's doing that. I can feel that I'm on a bony uh, protuberance, but it's not moving. So I know I'm, I'm now on the coracoid process. So that's another bony landmark that we use. There is a lot of important muscle attachments onto that. So I think we've taken you through all the bony landmarks at the moment. We've gone through the medial um, border, the inferior border, the lateral portion of the scapula, the superior border, which we didn't actually show you on Alex. So when you take uh, the medial border, you can follow it all the way up. And a lot of people, it feels um, like there's a big sort of, um, I'm gonna say ropey bit over that uh, superior border and that's your levator scapula attaches. You can see back here again where that blue is on there. That's the attachment point for your levator scapula. So that would be your superior um, angle of your scapula. So those are the bony landmarks that we uh, go through in Pilates therapy, uh, which help us with some of the screens and testings and we'll, so that we know where we are on the shoulder joint. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you did, then we are going to go through next the ranges of movement.